Good day. Today is Tuesday, November 18th, the third Tuesday of the month, where we hold our monthly community meeting. We have a full agenda of items to cover today. And as usual, we start our call at five minutes past the hour, so let's get right to it. The agenda today is uh, a number of items that will be let off with a foundation update provided by our uh, CEO for the foundation, Keith Elliston. Rudy Potent Zone will follow with an update on the annual meeting. Terry Weymouth will provide an update on the I2B2 hackathon coming up in early December. We'll provide an update on planning around a datathon that will include Michael J. Fox. And then we'll round out our call today with an update on where things stand with version 1.2, as well as progress on the 3C committees and their associated working groups. So Keith, I'd like to turn it over to you for foundation updates. Great. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, it's been uh, a busy time at the foundation since the annual meeting in, uh, in Ann Arbor. A lot of things that I've been working on here and getting done. Um, I'm going to focus specifically on uh, what we're doing in terms of uh, the uh, sustainability of the foundation around the, uh, the membership campaign for fiscal year 2015. And if you recall, the foundation is on uh, a fiscal year that goes from July uh, through June. And so we're, uh, we're in the midst of our uh, 2015 fiscal year currently. Uh, from that perspective, uh, Kevin, if you want to uh, yeah, bring up the first slide. The, the key thing that we're focusing on in the uh, membership campaign is, number one, renewals. So most of, uh, of your organizations which joined the foundation last year are coming up for renewal at your one-year anniversary. Uh, we are working to make sure that people are uh, committed to their renewals. Uh, Pfizer and Roche uh, already, amongst a couple of others, have committed to their 2015 renewals. Um, and we need to ensure that we're getting commitments uh, from groups that are renewing. Uh, particularly at the gold level uh, overall, so we can forecast our budget uh, for next year. Um, and then the second key aspect is focusing on bringing new members on board. Uh, and in fiscal 15, we've already brought on Perkin Elmer as a new gold member, um, and our Lion as a, a new silver member. Um, our goal is to bring on an additional two to three new uh, gold members, along with our renewals. And if we do this, our membership program will will reach our, our target of uh, just over a million dollars uh, to fund the, the foundation's efforts going forward. Next slide, Kevin. Um, uh, just to remind people, the membership package uh, for us contains uh, the set of uh, bylaws uh, for the corporation. There's uh, an agreement for the membership uh, overall and, and an application. And uh, uh, in essence, when you, uh, when you let us know, you send an email to Kevin Smith or to myself, uh, we'll send you a copy of the membership program. Um, if you're a renewing member, you have all this documentation. Uh, you don't need to have this in, uh, in addition. And uh, what our program is is that we'll send you a reminder uh, 90 days uh, ahead of your renewal date. Uh, we'll send you an invoice 60 days ahead of your renewal date uh, so that you can you know, meet your obligations on the renewal uh, on time. Next slide. Um, in terms of renewals, you know, if, you, uh, if you're at a member company, uh, just make sure that uh, that your, your management knows that you, you need to have your budget allocation for your membership fees and whatnot. Um, uh, as I said, we'll be sending out reminders as we go along. Uh, and for new members, uh, please help us recruit new members to the foundation. Uh, we're looking to identify uh, potential new members. We've had a modification to our, our bylaws and, and board membership that's been accomplished by our nominations committee. Uh, and it expanded the member-driven um, seats on the board from 10 to 15. And so we uh, certainly have room for new directors um, at that level. Uh, we will, again, next year have an election for uh, the board members going forward uh, for uh, 2016 uh, in April of next year. Uh, and then they'll be seated at the April board meeting and move forward from there. Um, if you uh, know of any new prospects or whatnot, please send them to us. Um, you know, help identify uh, for us those people that are using the platform and that are active in the community and, and that would, be, uh, would benefit from becoming a member. Uh, so just to remind you, what we need from you is the foundation is a member-driven organization. Uh, it needs your support. Um, it needs you to participate in governance and direction of the foundation. 
that's been something that's been very successful for us so far, and we want to continue uh, growing in that direction. Uh, please advocate for the platform. You know, building the community is really the long-term goal for us, um, and certainly the short-term goal is to build the, the adopters around the 1.2 platform and to build that to sustainability and stability. Uh, and participate in the community. We, we had a tremendous uh, outpouring of effort and, uh, and participation in the development of version 1.2, uh, particularly around software development and testing. Um, we need additional help on the documentation side. We still are waiting for documentation from people. Uh, Eric Kaplan is working uh, diligently to, to circle that up, um, but we do need uh, contributions from people, particularly to develop specific features. Uh, we have a growing number of videos coming out. Um, Alex Pepa, uh, advisor, has been working with us to develop some of those, and those are actually coming forward very nicely. Um, and we need you know, scientific input uh, as we go forward. Um, the key thing in, in moving forward from where we are is we have a number of key initiatives that you're going to hear about uh, today in terms of, of hackathons, uh, a datathon, which will be our first datathon working with Michael J. Fox. Um, uh, really tremendous efforts. Um, but we do need to motivate some additional um, of effort around uh, bug fixing, bug reporting, uh, and whatnot. And so Julie Bryant is going to tell us a bit about some of the experience of bringing our users together with our developer community, uh, specifically around uh, specific usability features in the platform. And that's identified some additional sets of things that we need to address. But more specifically is we need the organizations working with the platform uh, to get more involved in helping us do bug fixing and making sure that bug fixes that you do uh, are getting integrated into the releases as we go forward. And then finally, we'll hear a bit about data from the, the content committee. Uh, but it's very clear that now that we have this expanded feature set with version 1.2, uh, we are now in a, in a data poor environment. We need to, to bring new data onto the platform, uh, have new groups uh, come in and, and contribute data for uh, the demonstration purposes, uh, the content committee in terms of putting together a set of resources that people can use and load into their implementations of Transmark, um, and uh, hopefully an integrated uh, data offering with what we're doing with the virtual machine images so that people can readily test out all the key features that they have of interest very quickly using the virtual machine images that have been developed as part of 1.2. So uh, that's a, a quick overview of, of where we are. Uh, we are coming into uh, the holiday season. Uh, there's a lot of work that we, we need to do at the foundation during this time. Uh, there's a lot of work, I think, and effort that people can put in from the development and from the data side. And we do have, uh, in between times here, the, the hackathon uh, at Harvard coming up uh, the first week of December. So there's a lot of activity. So, so don't, uh, don't let your energy levels down. There's a lot happening through the holidays. Kevin, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Keith. Next, we'll uh, do a brief update uh, on the annual meeting. So, uh, Rudy, if you would be so kind. Uh, okay, thank you, Kevin. Uh, next slide. Uh, I don't know if you can see us waving here, uh, waving nicely on my machine, but uh, this is the group photo from the annual meeting. Uh, it was a very successful meeting. I hope everybody agrees who was there. We had over 130 uh, people attending uh, at the University of Michigan, which was a wonderful venue for us. Uh, they were very hospitable and, and took really good care of us. Uh, we had um, over 35 uh, talks presented, a number of uh, uh, sessions uh, with the 3C community meetings, and um, it was really uh, quite a, uh, an engaging uh, meeting with a lot of participation from a lot of folks, and I hope everybody had a, a really good time with that. Um, we did hand out on the next slide, uh, you can see our, our chairman of the board, uh, Gil Omum is uh, modeling for us the uh, fleece jackets that we handed out. Fortunately, we had a little bit of a problem and mix up on the sizes that we ordered, and so we do have a, a limited supply of additional jackets coming in, uh, mostly at the lower, smaller sizes. So if you attended the meeting and would like to, to get a jacket and you didn't get one, um, please send me a note and we'll try to accommodate as many of you as we can. Uh, again, apologies for that. Uh, it's a very nice jacket, and we're really, we're really pleased with uh, the, the jacket itself. Um, on the next slide, uh, for people who were at the meeting or those who weren't, um, we did record the entire meeting, and so all of the sessions uh, are actually documented uh, on the Lanyard site. Uh, you can get to this from our website. There are links uh, all over the place. Uh, and uh, you'll find that we have both the slide decks and video recordings of almost every one of the sessions. You got over 90% of the sessions covered, and I think every session has at least one 
at least the, the, the slides or the, the recording of it. And so uh, from the Lanyard site, you have direct links. Uh, these are well organized and laid out uh, in the agenda that we had uh, put together. Um, the videos are sitting out on YouTube, and the, um, the PowerPoints are on uh, our website. But this is a very convenient way that everything is linked together. <clears throat> and you can see uh, on, the, um, on the page here that you know, they're, they're marked whether it's a video or the, the presentation, the, the, power, the PowerPoint deck or the slide deck itself. And so again, these are available for you to download and, and enjoy. Um, if you have any issues, let us know. But I think this will be a, a really good um, a source for us going forward. Uh, I will also mention that the land site also has the Paris meeting still up there. And so you know, we will continue to maintain the older meetings as, they, as we progress. But there's a lot of really excellent talks here, and I really encourage you to, if you didn't come to the meeting, to uh, to review the site and see uh, all the wonderful things that you missed. That's what I have, and I'll uh, pass it back to uh, Kevin. Thank you, Rudy. Carrie, if you'd be so kind, please provide us with an update on where we stand with the upcoming Transmart I2B2 integration hackathon. Carrie, I believe you... Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, I was muted, sorry. Um, so um, there, there is going to be a code hackathon in the first week of December at uh, Harvard. Um, and you can see the list of participants there. The goal of the hackathon is to take the I2B2 um, set of data schema and the Transmart set of data schema and make sure that they are aligned in the sense that originally Transmart was built on top of I2B2 and there's been some drift and we want to bring it back in line. Uh, and then once that's done, uh, we will handle all of the implications in changes to the code, um, fixing the code so that it, it works with both the new Transmart schema and the, and the um, current I2B2 schema. Um, then once that's done, of course, we'll push it back to the, uh, to the main version, um, you know, just in time for the next release. Uh, yeah, there it is diagrammatically, what I just said. I think that's it, right? Kevin, do we have another slide? No, that, that's it. Thank you, Kerry. You bet. So moving on. I'll just add back, Kevin. Yes. Kevin. Go ahead. Um, the, 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 the I2B2 hackathon is documented on the wiki, so if you'd like to see the goals and objectives, those are there. Uh, that'll be December 1st through 5th, and we're doing this as a limited developer, so there are six developers that are participating in this. Um, and I think that this is uh, you know, specifically to accomplish these goals and objectives. Um, so we're pretty excited about working with, uh, with Paul Aviak uh, and the group there, um, Zach Ahani's group and whatnot at I2B2 and uh, making sure that we have an interoperability here at the data level that uh, will continue to serve both, both platforms. So I think it's, a, it's a, pretty, a pretty good event from that perspective. Just wanted to add that, Kevin. Thanks, Keith. So transitioning now to the upcoming Datathon that uh, Keith mentioned at the top of the call today. We are actively planning for the first foundation hackathon that will be conducted jointly with Michael J. Fox. For those of you who are in Ann Arbor, Ken Kubota uh, from, from the Michael J. Fox Foundation will work with the foundation and the broader Transmark community to pull that together. Currently, this is being planned for late February or early March. The venue will be on the West Coast. We are currently looking at potential sites in San Diego LA or possibly San Francisco. Through the uh, efforts of the Michael J. Fox Foundation and Ken Kubota, the ADNI and PPMI data sets will be made available in a, an appropriate manner in terms of, of how that data are made available. And we are currently looking for a third neuro data set to make uh, available as part of the datathon. 
The organizing committee will include Ken Kubota from the, from the Michael J. Fox Foundation, Keith Elliston, myself, as well as Rudy Potenzone and Brian Nathy from the foundation. And then as part of the broader Transmark community, uh, we have Julie Bryant from Rancho, Jay Bergeron from Pfizer, Ceremon Sharon from uh, Thomson Reuters, and Axel uh, from Imperial College of London slash Etrix that are involved in the organizing committee. Uh, in December, we'll go ahead and provide additional information, including uh, goals and objectives for the data fund. But this should be an exciting opportunity for the foundation partnering with a very significant uh, Transmart uh, implementation to really try and advance uh, the goals and objectives of open data. So Keith, uh, do you have any further uh, thoughts or comments that you want to share about the data fund as uh, we move forward with getting this organized? Yeah, I think this is a, this is a great example of, of the next kind of, of hackathon that we want to be doing as a foundation. And that is, is to bring you know, data scientists, uh, biologists, software developers together um, to, to really focus on how we advance the platform in the context of particular sets of data. This is a really exciting one um, with the ADME and PPMI data being integrated into version 1.2 of the platform. Um, and from that perspective, uh, developers and scientists who would like to participate in this one, we're targeting 10 to 15 people, uh, will need to apply through uh, LONI uh, for access to the data. That's the, the stewardship of the data. Um, but um, we'll have to complete that at least a week ahead of time before the, before the datathon. Uh, but then uh, what we're really going to focus on is a couple of key objectives. Uh, one around uh, building a, a, a sort of a, a portal interface to the platform uh, for the naive scientist that can come into this and get some functionality directly out of the Transmart implementation uh, without having to learn how to work with the platform. Uh, to specifically look at some methods for looking at biomarkers across data sets, particularly the Alzheimer's versus the Parkinson's data sets. Uh, and then specifically to find some interesting research findings that one might be publishable out of this. Uh, this is tying into uh, an effort that we're putting together working with uh, Cambridge Health Tech Institute for uh, BioIT World next year, which is really focused on crowdsourcing and, uh, and scientific applications. And we see this as a, a real step, uh, step uh, an advanced step in that direction for us uh, as a foundation as a, and as a community. So you'll be hearing a lot more about this. Uh, the group is coming together. Um, and I think this is really going to be an exciting event that people will want to participate in uh, as we go forward. And I hope that we have more of these kinds of events uh, in the future. Thank you, Keith. So moving forward, we're going to now transition into an update of version 1.2. And I'll uh, cover uh, this, this part of the call today. So in terms of overall status, we continue to have more than 60 unresolved issues logged in JIRA. And if you have access to JIRA, I'd encourage you to, to go and look at that. Um, a, a quick look at that this morning uh, shows that there is one critical unresolved issue. Um, uh, around 60 or so uh, major issues and then additional uh, minor and, and other issues that uh, are yet to be addressed as part of the ongoing 1.2 uh, bug fix and, and patch activity. As I think everyone is aware, uh, we have a public demo instance that is hosted by BT that has the latest uh, uh, version of 1.2, patch number 2, 1.2 implemented on that instance. And as we'll get into in the next part of today's call, we continue to have issues around data and issues around code. Keith already addressed those to, to some extent, and, and we'll talk a bit more. So as of today, we have a very small number of developers that continue to work on bug fixing. And it would be fantastic if we could see the same level of, of community involvement that led up to the production release of 1.2 in August. So this is an area where, as Keith was talking about before, 
the involvement of the community will allow us to move the, the platform forward in terms of overall quality in the ways that I think we all aspire to. And so the foundation is reaching out to the community for uh, additional resources. This is a volunteer activity, and so um, we, we really could uh, use your help in, in addressing these uh, open issues around data and, and code. So in, in terms of release and patch schedule, our, our next patch, patch number three, is scheduled for Monday, December 15th. That's right around the corner. We continue to hold weekly stand-up calls on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Eastern in the time slot that we are actually in at the moment. And we would love, as I already said, for you to get involved. You can do that by contacting Terry or myself, and uh, through the activities of the foundation, we'll um, uh, reach out to, to specific organizations for, for some help. Last week, uh, through, through the um, uh, efforts of Rancho Biosciences, uh, Julie and Tanya, who I believe many of you on this call know, um, led us through a, a demo of version 1.2, patch number two, that is currently implemented on the, um, the, the BT instance. And um, um, Julie, if you're on the call, I would love for you to take us through the next set of slides. So if you're there, uh, please, please acknowledge so that we can unmute you. Otherwise, uh, either Keith or I will walk through these next set of slides. Okay, I don't see uh, Julie or any indication that uh, she's she's on the call. So um, we'll we'll go ahead and uh, uh, walk through these next slides. So um, so Rancho, um, through the efforts of Julie and Tanya, have pulled together a developer user volunteer focus group, and this group had an initial call last week. And uh, we walked through the, the current uh, version of 1.2 from a user or scientific point of view, focused on a couple of scientific workflows and use cases. The goal of that call and the goal of this focus group moving forward is to really, uh, as a community, progress Transmart to be stable and of the best quality that we can, as an open source community, make the platform. So what did we do and how are we going to move forward? Um, we, we actually had users demonstrate Transmart in action to the developers. So these were scientists, informaticians that are using the platform for scientific research purposes and, and noting as we went along a number of issues. Terry, who has been very active in helping manage the release processes, uh, uh, actually um, entered what was noted during the call in terms of bugs and action items into JIRA. And as has already been mentioned, we are now looking to the community to help on a volunteer basis uh, address those issues. So given uh, where we stand today, we are looking to come back sometime in the next few weeks, perhaps a month, to uh, gauge progress and to identify potential uh, issues uh, that, that we will need to continue to address. Again, the goal is a stable Transmart platform of high quality that is usable from a user perspective to advance the research agendas of the associations and the research projects that they are associated with. Kevin, if I can just add to that really quickly. Um, one of the things that, that became obvious when we did our, our development cycle and our testing cycle is that when we were doing this, we were, we were developing and testing in a very specific paradigm, uh, which you know, one would hope in many ways mirrors what end users are doing. But what we've discovered is that that's not necessarily the case. And when end users are stressing the platform and doing an analysis, 
uh, with a specific data set or to try and achieve a particular uh, end goal that we were uncovering uh, different sets of, of, of bugs that were not uh, seen previously. And I think the other key element of that is when we tried to report these bugs, um, developers using their approaches were not able to replicate some of these bugs. And so actually putting the developers and the end users together has been able to illuminate this whole separate set of, of issues that had not been addressable previously. And this is something that we learned initially through our training program that we put in place you know, at the annual meeting with 1.2 where we uncovered a couple of key features like this. And I see this as a really important approach for us as we go forward to make sure we're connecting the end user experience with what we're doing on the development side to make sure that we're, we're, we're identifying issues, we're fixing those issues, and those fixes work for the end users. So this is a very, very important initiative. You know, Julie has taken a, a, a leadership role in, in helping bring this together, working with, uh, with Kevin and Terry from the foundation side and getting the developers organized. Uh, on that side of it as well. So this is a, a really important initiative for us in creating you know, a platform that the, the end user really can use uh, to achieve the goals that they have uh, for the platform. So I just want to stress that. It's, it's, a, it's a really critical event. Thank ahead, you, Ken. Keith. So as you see uh, on your screen, uh, this is a short list of, of items that came out of that call that uh, we are working to organize volunteers to help work through, and as these are addressed, we will go back, repeat this process, and identify through other uh, workflows and scientific work uh, uh, use cases additional issues that, uh, as a community, we need to continue to address. I'd say if anybody wants to participate in that as well, you know, they should contact Kevin or Julie, who can plug them into the process. Absolutely. Again, a second page of, of issues that were noted coming out of that call last week. So um, as has already been uh, mentioned, uh, we are going to get on a regular uh, uh, schedule or cycle that um, as, as we fix identified issues, we'll go back, repeat the process, identify a new set of issues. And, and work through those. And so to Julie's point, this is a volunteer um, effort and, and we really need volunteers that represent the developer community and the user community coming together to really drive this forward to really maximize the, the, the quality that we all um, um, aspire to. Okay, uh, moving on. Our, our next agenda item for today are the uh, 3C committee and working group uh, uh, progress updates. And so what I'm going to do is, Jay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, unmute you and give you the opportunity um, to um, update uh, the those on the call on the activities hi. of the uh, committee. Yeah, hi. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Kevin. We can. Thank you. All right. So I'll go through this really quickly. Um, so basically at the annual meeting, we decided on three working groups associated with the code committee. Uh, one, the production uh, management group, which we named production management, uh, quality assurance, and architecture. And just to go through uh, all the elements of production management, I think those are well, uh, currently, they're well taken care of on the Tuesday call. So if you're on the development team or have any interest in the state of the application, the state of the uh, remediations, and the and the updates. So that's a good meeting to attend, and that the the goals may uh, and activities may shift as we as we move and transition out of of 1.2 and 1.2 reading remediation into the future of the application. Uh, quality assurance. I'm actually going to make a proposal. Um, it was quality assurance was a working group that was proposed at the meeting. Unfortunately, there's only three people who agreed to to be on it, and the person who had proposed it um, actually well, wasn't willing to be on it either. I would actually propose that quality assurance be uh, reintegrated within to uh, the production management uh, and and have uh, testing and, and other elements of quality associated with the production management team, and again focused on the. Uh, on these Tuesday meetings. So what I'm going to talk about, uh, finish up with today, is, is the architecture group. And if we go to the next slide. 
So we're going to have the first meeting of the, of the architecture group to talk about the architecture roadmap uh, this Thursday. And I have the people uh, listed who are invited to that meeting. So if there's anyone who uh, is wanting to be part of the architecture uh, working group and I missed your name, please fire me an email and I'm more than happy to forward you the, the, um, uh, the invitation. But basically, if you look at a number of things that we talked about at the, the code committee breakout in the annual meeting, and I think at my original slides, this first one was bolded. Uh, uh, really, of all the elements that we discussed, the one that was really put forward as, as where we want to go with the application was the API extension and trying to demarcate uh, the interface, uh, the API in the middle tier, and basically try to get Transmart in a position where uh, even you know, Transmart itself is actually using its own API and really understand where we want to go with the core code to support the API and the various decorations that can be uh, attached to it. And that as one of the guiding principles moving forward and one of the, the really focal points of where we want to be in the, in the next year. So for this meeting, I would expect that uh, people are going to want to focus on uh, particularly these elements of the this element of the architecture roadmap, as well as some of the uh, certainly the the others that that we had discussed, but I would expect to have the API and the core code to support the API being the most pertinent uh, discussions for for the upcoming meetings. And again, the first one is on Thursday, so I'll just leave it with feel free to to uh, reach out to me uh, if you would like to be in the meeting or and would like to be on the, the architecture working group. And as I said, I'll be more than happy to forward that invitation to you. Thanks very much. Thank you, Jay. So Sherry, I believe I've unmuted you. And uh, if that is the case, I would love it if you could walk us through the updates around the community committee and its working groups. Sherry? Hello. Hey, Sherry. Uh, can you hear me? We can. Oh, okay, great. Um, so uh, I, I will be quick as well. Um, in t so since um, uh, the, the uh, annual meeting, I think we had a uh, one ex uh, one extra community uh, working group uh, call. I think overall, I think we established overall the community committee goals is. First of all, we want to engage existing community, which is really we're working with community. That's the, uh, we're going first with uh, really supporting the, the effort of really, um, you know, having all the users and developers together and uh, um, hoping to um, make the, the the platform really stable and, and user friendly in, the, in that case then to build a solid basically a solid platform so that way um, in terms of um, solidifying the existing community and then based on that we grow the further community um, as a next step. Um, in terms of redefining and uh, revisiting group we had a, a several working group that's de um, defined and uh, at the, the earlier this year, and um, what we are um, really established the last month or so is um, we, we're going to have a weekly conference call to define and act, you know, activate each working group, so um, you will see in the, in the next slide that's on the, a brief schedule. In terms of for each, group, um, each working group, we'll actually define the mission group members and three to six months goals. And, um, and, and all of and, and hopefully this we can also define a, a, a feedback mechanism that um, essentially the, you know, we can work with the um, greater community and reflect the, the community um, feedback at large. Um, this will first present in January um, board meeting. The progress will be presented in the January meeting. The next slide. So the, uh, the actual process, so we have a weekly call and um, uh, we have identified group lead. Um, this week actually, well, we, uh, actually the, the, 
it's right um, it's a noon today. So if you guys, uh, if any of you are still in, you know, have time and interested to join us, we're going to discuss some very important um, topics, which is the use case and uh, user guide and training uh, that I Dave Burke and Julie uh, Bryan. And um, uh, the next, um, so. Um, the group leader will present a will proposal uh, will pro propose in an, an agenda for each meeting, and um, then will be discussed, and then hopefully um, getting really get some action going on. And essentially, actually, I think there's some work is being already um, done um, right now. So as we speak, um, the, you can see the schedule. These schedules are not um, uh, sort of written in stone. So um, and just make adjustment as possible. Uh, all the materials will be presented on each call and uh, will also be um, included, updated on hopefully on the um, you know, on the, the the community as well. Um, I think the next slide. And we really, I think the the major uh, voice here is actually we want everybody to get involved. Um, I. I know we have some really good volunteers to to begin with. I um, but I think um, um, as you can see, the in terms of really gathering all the good use cases, the, the training materials takes a lot of effort and and um, um, you know resources as well. So um, um, if you can and and uh, volunteer, we will really appreciate effort. Um, this is the registering. And uh, if you need uh, further information, just contact Kevin and I. Thank you, Sherry. Okay, move, moving on. Um, our, our last uh, committee report is from the content committee. Um, I do not at this time see Julie on the call who prepared these slides on behalf of the committee. Um, Sirimon, um I've just unmuted you. I, um, if if you want to walk us through these slides, you're you're welcome to. If not, I will go ahead and and do that on behalf of the committee. Uh, your choice. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, sure. Um, we can walk through this uh, few slides. So it's very quick update that um, we've been exchanging lots of emails, and Julie has been. Uh, leading exchanging um, lots of information uh, on various working group in in the content committee. So one of the uh, working group is to create the catalog of data sets. So right now we have some first pass that that will be sent um, and distribute for feedback. And then we we need more information uh, in order to create website. And now we are. We are still in the process of collecting feedback for new data types for Transmart as well. So um, we, we would love to hear more on um, your thoughts on that. So feel free to send us a note. Um, right now we have some first uh, draft ready that, that will be um, open to a wider uh, community feedback um, real soon. Next slide. This is the, the first draft that we mentioned. Um, so it's mostly coming from um, the, the collection that Rancho Bioscience has been um, doing. Um, next slide then. So the, this is also a compiled list of the data that's already been available um, on the GitHub, and it's been used as a testing data for uh, during the development of the version 1.2. Um, so uh, we we make that com compile uh, together um, along with the, the rest of the information. Next. So we still need several more data types that, that can be used you know, during this process. Um, so there, again, there are a lot of question marks here that we like to get more feedback and, and more collaborators into this process.
Your mom? Yes. So um, also just more details on the uh, the format. What what we um, like to communicate with the community. So this is the first suggestion. Um, if that we can send out, and if everyone you know have the data set that you can contribute uh, to the community, uh, you can fill out this the form and send it to us. This this slide show the other um, working groups that's regarding the curation and ETL process. So the data collection um, are still in process. Um, is Rancho has been working on the first step about ETL guideline and have some we also have a lot of response uh, coming from Sanofi um, using the, the ETL tool that Sanofi has been uh, developed. This is just um, the information about the ontology. So the first um, suggestion by Sirarat, um, who is right now with EBI in Europe, is been um, working on a lot of ontologies. So which should be a very good complement um, to the uh, to our transmart community. So again, a lot of question mark. This is our first um, discussion that that we just get started to see what you know at public ontology we should be added as uh, deliverable for this working group, and and you know how we gonna go about develop them. Uh, some of them could be a public available uh, resource already, and if some of them we need to to license, such as um, some of the drug or clinical ontology. So, I don't, Kevin, do you have anything to add here? Uh, no, not not at this time. Um, I, I think tr it's true with the content committee and its working groups, but also with with the code and the community committee and their working groups that as they really are positioned to do the work of the foundation from a member perspective, we acknowledge that in some cases there need, may need to be some resources made available, budget lines that may be available. And so through this process of, of activating the working groups, uh, through the governance process that the foundation has put in place, through the member 3C committees, uh, we will be able to go back to uh, foundation management as well as the foundation board to um, request um, um, support for some of the key initiatives that through these working groups that the community feel is important to advance the platform and to uh, advance the collective objectives of open source, open data, open science. Mm -hmm. Yep, thank you. So I think, I mean, this is a, a lot of details of the first draft of, you know, what we collected so far. Um, so it's available for um, everyone to review and you know give us the feedback. So this slide show information that we collect for the ETL and then um, the um, so this one is the another even another working group that will be focused on analytics and new functionality of Transmart. Um, so we want to create a catalog to to of the analytical capabilities of Transmart. We want to add some uh, the CAP analysis and any future integration of Transmart with other platform. So again, we you know, we did start um, creating this catalog and and you know in 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 uh, creating new suggestion um, what what would be the uh, future um, platform that we, do, that we would like to see Transmart integrated with.
So this is uh, the, the suggestion from uh, Brian from Sanofi about the new type of analysis. Um, last um, working group that we have going on is about the IP and data sharing policy, um, which will cover everything, uh, the rest of the working group that, that we show so far. Um, so all the information that anyone share with the foundation and the community sh should have the, you know, the IP and, and policy um, that open and and can be shared with the rest of the foundation and members. So we want to make sure that all the legal requirements are set up and you know if there's a license use um, um, of before each person can download the data, we need to follow those format. So we still need more information and more um, set up um, during this process. So thank you, Sharon, for walking us through this set of slides that Julie had put together on behalf of the, the content committee. So we have now, over the last uh, 50 minutes, um, uh, walked through the, the agenda that we wanted to cover today. We already have a handful of questions that um, have been entered into the question window. Uh, we have a couple of people that have their uh, hands raised, um, and um, what what I've done is, is I've unraised those. So at this time, we'd like to open this up for discussion, and if you'd like to ask a question or make a comment, either raise your hand so that uh, we can see that, and uh, we'll also address the questions that have been typed into the chat window. So I see that Jay Bergeron has already raised his hand, so I'm going to unmute Jay and I'll also unmute Sherry so that they can make uh, comments or ask questions. Jay? Jay Bergeron? Yeah, can you hear me now? We can. All right, uh, so thanks very much. Just a couple quick questions. I think first and foremost, it would be really good to know how many groups are deploying 1.2. Uh, I know that there's a lot of, w in terms of the development activity and the call for volunteers, I think it would be worthwhile to know who's actually deploying it. Uh, I mean, say Pfizer is currently, so we're one of, one of the folks. I know there's a, Etrix is as well, um, because our ability to be able to contribute something to development is going to be curtailed during the period where we're trying to get get 1.2 out, which, which is which is actually kind of a big deal. So this is, um, I think, deploying 1.2 is a, is a substantial uh, release for any any uh, organization that's doing that, uh, and that might help kind of gauge how um, how you know, what the pool of developers, you know, uh, the potential pool of developers is. I think secondly, for Siramon, I apologize if I missed it, but, uh, we had talked about the potential of having a third neurodegenerative study as part of the datathon with Michael J. Fox. And I saw that you have some investments associated with uh, some of these ontologies. Have you thought about, and again, I, 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 I think I missed a slide or two of your, of your talk, have you thought about maybe uh, as part of the datathon uh, putting some funding toward uh, something like CAMD, which would probably be another a high value neurodegenerative uh, data set. So, so that, go ahead, Sirmon. No, I, I think that's a great question. Um, I I don't think we put that thought in, in terms of the data versus the ontology um, during our discussion yet. Um, but yeah, we, I, do, I will definitely take a note and, and see what we can, you know, come up with. 
Okay, great. Thank you. And maybe, uh, Kevin, maybe what we can do is if, um, and I'm happy to be the, the point um, person for this, if, if any group is deploying 1.2 currently, um, feel, feel free to send me a, a note and just as I, I can keep track of that as part of the production management, if you will, uh, part of the code committee. And I think it would just be worthwhile to know um, who's deploying uh, relative to the, the developer pool that we, we might have to work on um, uh, some of the remediation. So right. Jay, <coughs> Jay one, one quick question that's come up in discussion has been, you know, putting some sort of, uh, you know, voluntary registration into the install scripts so that people could, you know, send a note back to the foundation that they're doing an install. Um, we've had some debate internally if that is, you know, a good idea or not. Do you have any thoughts on that? I Honestly, I think that would be, I think that would be great. I guess uh, some people get a little bit, I guess I suppose they'd be a little bit upset about that. I, I don't know. I, actually, I think that would be, I think it would be worthwhile as long as people are aware of it that they're, that, that a message is being sent back. Yeah, no, we'd definitely do something that people could opt into, but it's, I think we want to facilitate, you know, people letting us know that they're working with the platform, and that's something that, uh, you know, I, I think we really need to have a measurement of, of the, the uptake of 1.2. Great. Thanks. Th thanks very much. And uh, I, sorry, I have to sign off right now. But I will uh, again. The, uh, you know, if any organization wants to let me know if one point, if they're deploying one point two, I'm also for for the time being more than happy to be uh, sort of a, a a message taker for that. Great. Thanks, Jay. Okay. Ward, um, I see your hand is raised, and you had also uh, typed in a number of questions into the question. Uh, Payne, so I'm going to go ahead and unmute you and give you a chance to uh, uh, interact on the call today. Thank you, Kevin. And uh, first of all, I totally agree with uh, Jay. Um, so I can definitely speak for, for CTMM Trade as we are also uh, going into deployment, giving trainings, and um, so we're also actively bug fixing and uh, putting that back to the to the um, to the community. And I think. Uh, in Indeed, with so many people getting it into deployment, there should be more people. Probably, probably people are bug fixing, and then, um, it might be uh, worthwhile trying to get that back to the community. I don't know if that's happening in all the cases. Um, but um, one of the questions that I had is uh, on the Transmart 1.2 manual. I know that there was an effort on getting that one up to date. I saw it on the slides or somewhere, but mm -hmm. is there is there a version yeah. now? <clears throat> Rudy, do you want to comment on that? <clears throat> yeah, this is Rudy. Um, we don't have a version yet, but we're, we're getting closer. Um, we're continuing to work on it. It's, it's fairly uh, complicated in terms of you know, figuring out what's changed and what hasn't in the existing features. Uh, we've made a lot more progress on the new features, and so we're working both to get um, uh, a demo videos uh, up and out on our YouTube site along with then updating the user manual, and then that will also update the, um, the online help um, um, messages and so actively working on it we're going to okay. get you know, we're, we're hoping to get something relatively soon that will be at least the first pass at this for the the initial user manual. Eric Kaplan's leading that project and he's working he's doing it as fast as he can. Okay if we can be of help then uh, then let me know. Um, yeah and that, that's you know that we, we will be depending on a number of you to give us some, some additional feedback but we're you know we're, we're really working through it. Great, great, because we also need this for trade to, to hand it out, of course. Um, and, um, yeah, I had some some replies to, to Julian Siriman, but I think I'll just get them uh, get, get to them in the email because it's a lot of small stuff. So, thank you for this. Great. Thank you, Ward. Okay, we're near the top of the hour. Uh, I believe uh, at the moment we've addressed... Uh, those who wanted to speak by raising their hand. Uh, I see Sherry, your hand is raised. Let me unmute you and give you a chance to to chime in as well. Sherry? Yeah, hi. Um, I, I have a, um, one question, actually two questions. One, I guess, um, um, in terms of, um, I guess, the 1.2 adoption, um, how, and I also in terms of the, all the bug fixing, I think there's I think there's really uh, additional resources that needed, and I think there's a quite a bit of a list as well. So I, uh, right now, it seems this uh, question in terms of um, uh, asking for volunteers, is there any uh, any additional resource that 
that's possible that we can get that uh, done as soon as um, you know when the bugs are reported. I hear silence. <laughs> <laughs> so by additional resource. Yeah. And yeah, so, so Sherry, this is something that I think within the foundation both Keith and I are, are, are trying to address. Um, as I think has been stated before, we are a volunteer um, community. We had great participation um, earlier this year, particularly in the May, June, July timeframe leading up to August 1. And so we're going back to some of the key organizations that were active during that period to see if um, uh, we can re-engage uh, some of those resources, acknowledging the comments that uh, both Ward and Jay made that a lot of these organizations that were so active during that time period are now in the process of actually deploying 1.2 for, for their customers. And so while they are fixing bugs and whatnot, they're, they're um, the, um, we, we, we are going to go back and see if, if we can get some better organization and, and uh, revive some of that momentum we had going earlier this year. Yeah, so I mean, uh, so is it possible to leverage some of uh, the, the development uh, bug fixing you know, capabilities coming from the organization who, who are deploying the, these, um, um, the 1.2 actually internally? I mean, as what you mentioned, they have to fix for their uh, customer anyway, so maybe um, you know one they don't have to fix the same bug um, over and over, and then the second is um, um, then you know really the the development resource can be leveraged by the foundation. Right. Well, that's something we're very actively trying to do, Sherry. Um, I think the challenge is, and I think as Ward um, you know pointed out, is that if you look at the number of pull requests from the GitHub. Um, and reports in JIRA, I think people are doing a lot of bug fixing that's not getting back into the code base. And I think if people are not aware of how to do that, um, we certainly can, can do a quick seminar and, and inform people that way. But anyone who's doing deployments right now should be um, working with the JIRA, doing bug reporting, and uploading bug fixes when they're fixing these things. And I, I think there's a lot of effort that's just not getting collected. So that's a, a big area of effort that we're focusing on. Um, if you know of, of anybody doing that, please you know, help them get engaged. But we're reaching out to people that we know are doing this and, and trying to make sure that they know how to, how to incorporate those bug fixes back in the platform. Excellent. Um, another just a comment, actually, while, while I was uh, listening to Cyril's um, presentation, that um, seems like the content uh, committee is cataloging functionalities. And, um, and I think there isn't a, a synergy between that effort with the use case collection um, efforts in the community, um, um, uh, you know, uh, committee, <laughs> community committee, I guess, <laughs> uh, the working group. So um, I, I think it's just a comment that I think probably the, the two groups need to um, cross notes or um, somehow, you know, be connected. Right. So, Sherry, that's a, a great uh, action item for you as as the liaison uh, to the other committees and the working groups on behalf of the community committee. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Giving me homework. <laughs> well, I wouldn't want to forget about you, Sherry. Sure. Yeah, no, Sherry, I, I agree with that. Um, we have... Um, like some of the team members that actually join in both of the working groups. So joining was a use case working group and on the uh, functionality catalog as well. So we can certainly um, arrange something between those. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, and I, th I think this is a great example that there are likely other activities that um, multiple committees and their associated working groups probably share in common, but perhaps coming at, at them from a slightly different vantage point. And what we, I think, as a community really need to um, make sure that we're cognizant of is that uh, we, we address those and when it makes sense, really uh, support that, that cross-working group, cross-committee activity in a way that doesn't duplicate effort, et cetera, et cetera. So Sherry, thanks for um, calling that out. 
Any other questions or comments uh, for today's call? Uh, I just noticed um, Yanni was asking about the, the two committees as part of the code piece, the product management group versus production management committee. Are those two different things? So Jay is not on, there's no longer on the call. Um, I don't want to answer that definitively, so why don't we take that question offline and make sure it gets addressed and we get back to Yanni, but also to the broader uh, community uh, in the very near future. Sounds great. Thanks. Okay, last call for any questions or comments. Okay, seeing that uh, no, no one else is, is uh, standing up, um, thank you for participating over the last hour for the November monthly community call. We will do this again on the third Tuesday of December and close out our activities for the calendar year. So again, thank you very much for participating, and we'll talk to you in four weeks. Thanks, Kevin.